To state the obvious, shotguns are extremely powerful and popular these days. And because they are so strong, people feel that the only counter is to use a shotgun themselves, which leads to a perpetual cycle of seeing more and more shotguns. As expected, these stats from Guardian.gg show that shotguns account for 15.73% of all crucible kills, whereas snipes and fusion rifles combined, less than 3%. Although shotguns are easy to pick up and use, that doesn't mean they're skillless, and by the end of a match, it's really apparent who the better shotgunner is, or the better player, because the goal is to play to win. Some players, however, dislike the idea of a game played with only one weapon or strategy at the forefront. The reason I personally dislike shotguns is because they are inherently random, and instant kills make lag matter more. But aside from that... Before we get into the shotgun counter guide, here is a quick list of timestamps for the video, this is going to be a long one. I figured it would be best to start off by learning about shotguns, getting to know your enemy per se. As we learned in my good friend Fallout's video on shotgun testing for Season 3, it still holds true today. Shotguns are random, and this is caused by a difference of impact, range, and pellet spread. But on top of those three things, we now have random rolls and mods, which account for all the shotguns that you see in the wild being mostly different. In other words, shotguns are random as hell. But here's what my testing consistently showed. I'll save the uber-specific reviews for shotguns for later, and now just briefly talk about each one. One of the most common shotguns you'll run into is the Badlander, and that drops from almost everything. It's a rapid-fire frame, so it fires fully automatic at 100 RPM. It consistently kills with full choke Akarai's rounds at around 7 meters, and will 2-tap at around 10 meters. Again, I'm going to keep the descriptions and origin stories on these shotguns very, very short because this is a shotgun counter guide. I'll do a shotgun guide in the future. If you want, just let me know in the comments. The next shotgun on the list is the Badlands, and that exists in both the Kinetic and the Energy slot depending on when you obtained it. Like the Badlander, the Badlands is a rapid fire frame shotgun, so it shoots really, really fast. The difference being, it is a fixed roll, so every Badlands you see will be the same, every Badlander you see will be different. As far as other fixed roles on this list, we have the Deadpan Delivery, the Botheration, the Dead Nemoris, which is a green version of the Botheration, and the Chaperone. Parcel of Stardust is the Gambit Kinetic Shotgun, Retold Tail is the Dreaming City Energy Shotgun, Good Bone Structure is kind of like the Chaperone in the fact that it shoots a single slug round, so basically the trade-off is that if you aim for the head, you kill at a further distance. The main takeaway from this chart is that if you're within 7 meters of a Guardian, you're toast. But honestly, a shotgun in isolation isn't a big deal. It's when it's combined with navigating cover on the map, with advanced movement abilities, that's when it becomes a nuisance. Especially seeing as most of the existing Crucible maps contain cover, within about 10 meters of an objective, it makes sense that people gravitate towards shotguns. The obvious method for countering a shotgun is to simply avoid close quarters. But due to the inevitability of having to capture a flag or grab the centralized power ammo, you always end up in close quarters. So unless you also bring a shotgun, how can you counter somebody who rushes you down in close quarters? The best answer to this is to use a loadout with enough stopping power to put down a mindless shotgun warrior. Most people remember a gun, the last word, with fond, fun memories. It definitely did that job well. Because there have been leaks about the last word returning, I figured that it's a good historical tangent to go on to talk about the role in which the last word played. In Vanilla Destiny 1, in the launch months, believe it or not, auto rifles were the most popular weapons, and they had enough stopping power to deal with the weaker shotguns of the time. As shotgun rolls were more optimized, leading to longer one-hit kill distances, that's when the last word rose to prominence. What made the last word special was the fact that it had a faster fire rate than other hand cannons while also giving bonus damage when firing from the hip. A glitch existed though for the majority of the last word's life, where aiming down sights gave a large random chance to hit 111 damage instead of the usual 86. So my problem with the gun at the time was the fact that I could lose a duel to random elements rather than my aim and decision making, but I'd be lying to you if I didn't say it put down shotgun users pretty easily. For a snipe based loadout, no gun was better than the last word, even despite nerfs to the random 111s. That is, until the Doctrine of Passing, a 900 RPM bullet hose was introduced. 
It sported a TTK, time to kill, slower than that of a hip fire last word two tap, but was so forgiving and consistent that it superseded the last word. The point I'm trying to make is that, because of poor primary shotgun balancing, it made the last word easily one of the most used weapons in the game, to the point where one meta was essentially a two gun game. At least in vanilla or the doctrine days, more than two competitive options existed. So with the last word returns, don't get too hyped because I can see two scenarios happening. One, it returns just as powerful as ever, it is one of three weapons used in PvP at the top level, or two, it returns weak and players riot wanting the old last word back. If it does return strong, what is the point of SMGs, not forgotten, sidearms, and fusion rifles? As it stands, if you map out the time to kill versus damage drop off and range for all weapons, you'll see that at least one competitive type of weapon exists out of all kinds. This is the best balance has ever been. So just now I rhetorically asked what's the point of SMGs, not forgotten, sidearms, and fusion rifles? Because there is a point. They actually kill pretty fast. But is it fast enough? To answer that question, I charted the speeds of our guardians and used that as a reference point for deciding whether you could kill a shotgunner before he reaches one hit kill distance. I know this all seems unnecessarily scientific, but I feel like it adds more weight to the argument than just saying, the gun feels crispy. What you're seeing in the background is my guardian moving 50 meters with a combination of different sprint speed increasing items as well as titan skating and burst gliding. Funnily enough, if you compare apples to oranges with Destiny 1 and Destiny 2, the macro skate is actually very similar to spamming the jump button on a Destiny 1 Titan skate. Of course, the name of the game with Titan skating is acceleration, which means you have to have a large distance in order to get fast. So that is exactly why I did the test again at 5 meters and 10 meters, and then scaled it down for 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meter, and 4 meter, and 100 meter. Before my console friends and subscribers exit out of this video, keep in mind that if these strategies work on PC, where Titan skating is a thing, they will most certainly work even better on console. Let me help you navigate this chart real quick. At the 50 meter mark, you'll see that the fastest by far is a Lion Rampant Scroll Wheel Skating Titan. I pray to God that Titan skating will get nerfed eventually, but since it isn't, let's talk about these numbers. At 50 meters, clearly, Lion Rampant Scroll Wheel Skating Titan is the fastest, but as you go down a little bit, look at the 10 meter test. The Warlock is somehow faster. And now as we inch back closer to point blank distance with 5 meters, the Lion Rampant Scroll Titan is again faster than the Warlock. So what we can infer from this chart is that Titan Skating takes a long distance to get fast, but its point blank initial velocity is faster than a Warlock's point blank initial velocity. However, once you get into that mid distance, aka the shotgun distance at 10 meters, the Warlock macro jump is superior. I purposely didn't mention Hunter, Stompy, Control, or Triple Jump with the macro because it gives no benefit. For those of you who don't know what a macro is, it's any program that automatically inputs buttons for you at any interval you set. So I could have it hit the spacebar 100 times a second, even though physically I couldn't even do that 10 times. The Hunter Control Jump isn't as important on this chart because it very clearly trades control for speed, even though I would say that Stompy Control Jump feels very fast. The same goes for Blink. It is very obviously the fastest forward momentum in close quarters, but it has a lot of trade-offs, so I didn't include it in this chart. I did, however, include Usain Bolt just for shits and giggles so you can compare the Olympian to your Guardian. Again, while this chart seems unnecessary and arbitrary, it does help paint the picture of where is a safe distance to challenge a shotgunner. And inevitably, when there's not a safe distance to fight a shotgunner, well, then you have to employ some anti-shotgun strategies, which I'll talk about later in the video. So let's combine the two. We're going to take how fast the Guardian moves, combined with how far the shotgun kills. This will give you an approximate millisecond view into the amount of time you have to kill a shotgun warrior before they kill you based on your positioning on a map. Please don't let this idea scare you, it's mainly used as just the backbone of an argument for choosing the proper loadout. To help clarify this, let me give you one example while you look at me, shoot my teammate in the background while he aims at me with Darcy to illustrate some popular sight lines on this map Endless Veil. So let's imagine that our opponent is around 13 meters away using the Botheration shotgun, 
which if we reference the shotgun chart, you'd remember that it kills at around 8 meters. So if our opponent's 13 meters away and the botheration kills at 8 meters, that means he has to travel 5 meters to close the gap to be within that one hit kill range. Luckily, we know exactly how long it would take for somebody to travel 5 meters. Let's say that he was a warlock using transversive steps. Then we know that he can travel 5 meters in 0.7 seconds. So to kill this said shotgun warrior, we need a loadout or a weapon or something like that that kills him in under 0.7 seconds. I wonder if anything exists in this game that could do that. Abrupt musical shift aside, oh boy, another chart. This time, this chart contains all of the combos that I consider lethal enough to deal with the shotgun. Some of them are sort of meme suggestions like Cold Heart, but I'll get to that later in the video. The three things you'll learn from this chart is time to kill, damage drop off, and comfort zone, which is where I feel comfortable getting a kill. Let's just start off with the first two examples, a not forgotten three tap and a snipe body hand cannon combo out of a sprint cancel. The 3 tap has a time to kill of 0.75, whereas the snipe to body shot combo kills in 0.43. So in that botheration example I made a minute ago where I said we need a loadout that can kill within 0.7, this one can do that. It can get close enough with the 3 tap, maybe a trade, or you can all out just disrespect him with the snipe body shot combo and end that shotgun warrior's career. But like I said earlier, a good rule of thumb at this point is not to get too invested in knowing these matchups down to the millisecond. A shotgunner requires one easy shot, whereas you might have to land 10 consecutive automatic shots while backpedaling, and even if you do everything right, there's a chance that they might hit the most godly pellet RNG of their life. So simply throwing on a proper loadout doesn't guarantee immediate success. Inevitably, you have to enter shotgun distance to cap an objective or to grab power ammo. This is where anti-shotgun strategies come into play. To list a few, I can think of radar manipulation, faking movement and intention, abilities like nades and melees, exotic choice, simply being patient, team play, ammo starvation. I could go on forever. You're gonna have to build a very extensive playbook to counter shotgunners because be happy that the average shotgunner's playbook just contains one play. Hold forward. Did this man just use a wish ender in a backup plan fusion to see through the wall and pre-fire on people? Jokes aside, I'm pretty much going to go through all those loadouts that I listed and any clever thing that I can think of in terms of anti-shotgun strategy, I'm just going to talk about it, sort of like a post-commentary review. So loading into this rumble match, my loadout contains wish ender, an exotic bow that lets you see through walls when fully drawn, and Arantola, high impact fusion. This one has backup plan. The perk allows you to switch to the fusion and temporarily have a faster charge time, which means less prediction required to take down a shotgunner. I know this loadout seems wonky, crazy, and you don't think anybody would ever use it in a tournament. And you may be right, but I think this one perfectly illustrates the idea of using all the information this game gives you at your fingertips. I mean, just look at this shit in the background. Look at my radar. It flares up. I go third person to see him. I charge a shotgun grenade jump, and end his career. I'll continue doing this for all the loadouts, but if I see something I like in terms of gameplay, I'm just going to continually repeat it while I talk about what's happening in the background. So I see my radar, use the sword hilt to go third person, I stand in cover, in safety, and start charging my shotgun grenade, the new Voidwalker grenade. I short hop, toss the grenade, then ability jump, blink, into cover. The only way I could have died right there is if that guy was the best snipe in the world, because that's kind of hard to read. Also notice that my attention was shifted, and I blink aiming the opposite direction, expecting somebody to pinch and rush me immediately. Moving on here, let's see what's happening. Looks like I found somebody through the wall with my bow. I'm going to continue keeping tabs on him, and then getting ready to switch to the fusion. So now, switching to the fusion, annihilates him. Again, this just stresses the importance of using your information. 
use your radar. If you crouch, you're temporarily off the radar for a second, so you can sort of bait people into making risky decisions. At that point, I heard somebody use an ability jump, so that's when I peeked out because he was locked into his jump velocity. Now I'm aiming down the bow, again looking third person, trying to get as much info as I can. Seriously, shotguns do not stand the chance when you have wall hacks. I guess I'll recommend that as you become more attuned and accustomed to the way that this radar works, use this wish ender combo as sort of a baby's first guide to fusion rifling. Because fusion rifling depends on success of pre-aiming, pre-firing. Basically, knowing where your enemy is going to be. Another learning moment in the background is that nothing around me is really happening. People are playing slow, but I have to exercise patience because the second that I run in gung-ho without any information is the second that I get shotgunned. Unfortunately, I missed a fusion rifle burst, but he also missed a shotgun, so I was saved and I beat him on the follow-up. Then I blink away and pay attention to my radar. Right as I drew back, I saw that somebody was behind me, so I split. Then I go third person, get a wider field of view, see anything, go third person, charge up the grenade, and realize that I finally have an exit strategy. Of course, in Rumble, the name of the game is just getting as many kills as possible, so I don't know if that was the best decision for winning the match, but this is a countering shotgun video, so my goal is just to stay the hell alive and dodge shotguns all over the place. Blink is one of the best tools for that. Blink is best when you combine it with the third person element of a sword hilt so that you can see more things around you, especially when you're safe in cover. So if you think about blinking from cover piece to cover piece, you're pretty much going to be set up for success. I'm most definitely aware that I value swords a lot more than your average Destiny player. The third person ability to start charging up a shotgun grenade is just way too powerful in this class to be overlooked. In addition, you can also use a sword swipe to extend your jump ability and get away from a shotgunner that much easier. And after you've seen an example of this in the background, that pretty much covers the extent of usefulness in this clip, and we'll move on to the next loadout. The next anti-shotgun loadout I'm going to go over is Risk Runner and a Snipe. I've said it in the past and I'll say it again, a sniper rifle is probably the most powerful weapon in Destiny 2 with a giant asterisk on it if you can aim. So the better you aim, the better a sniper rifle, at least in my experience. Sniper rifles have the capability to one hit kill at any distance, but of course the trade off being, if you get tagged by any damage, your scope sways all over the place, it's called flinch. So to mitigate the flinch, the best way to not get flinched is to just shoot first. I'm not bringing this up as a point to argue about how snipers should be balanced, I bring this up because this is how you have to play if you want to be decent with the sniper rifle right now. The other alternative would be to hold extremely tight angles to where you're not as likely to get reaction shot by someone else. But enough about snipers, I'll save that for another vid in the future. At the heart of this loadout is Risk Runner. An exotic submachine gun where if you take any arc damage, including your own, it supercharges this submachine gun to have infinity ammo temporarily, and any bullets that you tag on the enemy have a chance to conduct lightning to each other, thus dealing extra damage. I forgot to mention it earlier, but I figure I'll say it now. Shotguns do indeed have a time to kill. It just depends on how many shots you want to take. So important related note, whenever you proc arc conductor, not only is your gun overcharged, but you also take less arc damage. So if some unfortunate soul using the popular Badlander shotgun, which is arc by the way, decides to shoot you at 10 meters its usual 2 tap distance, well, they're not gonna kill you. The only reason I don't use this specific loadout more than I already do is because its catalyst for Risk Runner, the exotic catalyst, is only found in strikes and I haven't been lucky enough to get one. What the Catalyst does is it improves the range of Risk Runner, which definitely helps because you're giving up a hand cannon to run an SMG, with the trade-off being that you'll be able to deal with shotguns better. While this loadout wouldn't be my first pick for an anti-shotgun build, it would be my first pick for an anti-arc anti-shotgun build. If you see a lot of Striker Titans, a lot of Storm Callers, throw this on. If you see a lot of waking vigil hand cannons and specifically hate 150 hand cannon users, throw it on. But if you don't deal with much arc on a daily basis, you're probably better suited for a different loadout. If my voice is dying right now, that is because I know how long I have to continue talking for. 
But I love you guys and I hate shotguns, so let me talk about this Sturm and Drang build with a little more enthusiasm. Check this shit out. This is built on the theme of ammo starvation. You are not using a special weapon, so you don't drop special ammo bricks. So if someone's going on a tear, they're not gonna get your ammo because you don't have any. But Cammy, wouldn't you be missing out on instant kill lethality by not using a shotgun or a sniper or a fusion? Actually, no. Because with Empowering Rift and the power of Sturm Overcharge, you can one-tap people. The way that Sturm and Drang works is Sturm is the hand cannon, Drang is the sidearm. If you get a kill with Sturm, it reloads Drang. If you get a kill with Drang, not only does it reload Sturm, but it overcharges one bullet into the magazine, which instead of doing its normal 91 or 95 damage to the head, it now does 170. You might have noticed that I said two numbers there. If you get any energy weapon kill while having Sturm equipped, it now changes the damage from 91 to 95 to the head always until you reload. And against certain resiliences, that means you always two tap. So the way that I enjoy running Sturm and Drain is to get that initial Sturm overcharge, then I use Sturm, pop them once in the face for 170, immediately swap the Drain, and then kill them with Drain. This creates a perpetual cycle of shooting them once with Sturm, cleaning up with Drain, which then overcharges the Sturm again. And that combo will kill in a whopping .43, so good fucking luck shotgunners. Also, if you've been loosely paying attention to the background footage, rewatch the last like two minutes because this is some relentless carnage right here. Cause I just straight up gave these shotgunners the dictionary to read the definition of the word ape. To copy closely, but often clumsily and ineptly. To tell you the truth, I just looked this shit up for like a very cheap joke, but it ended up fitting pretty well. I figured that at this point in the video, someone's falling asleep and maybe this kept them up. Let's continue on. I plugged in my controller for this next one. It is Legion Sidearm and Borealis. This sidearm is the only Omelon sidearm to exist in the kinetic slot, and you get it from the Spire of the Stars raid layer. The Borealis previously was a PlayStation exclusive, but now is finally in the land of the frames. Pretty much any time I hop on console, Borealis is always in my inventory because the aim assist of the snipe is insane. So I thought this loadout was pretty clever because it takes two unique things. A exotic energy sniper, unique, and the only Omelon kinetic, unique. In the background, you'll see me keep shotgunners at bay with a combination of my sword hilt to see third person, my dodge roll to go invisible, and my smoke nade. The Night Stalker, it truly does have an anti-shotgun kit. And I know someone's like angrily typing in the comments like, Cammy, this is just a sniper highlight reel. And my argument to that is, if they're in the spawn screen, they are not going to shotgun me. I will say though, for a serious tip, a lot of people forget to backpedal, like right here, I body him, backpedal while shooting. If I didn't backpedal, I'd have died. In case you don't feel like obtaining the Legion sidearm, you can instead use a Smuggler's Word, which is new in the Forsaken expansion. It's a new kind of sidearm, which instead of shooting a burst of three like an Omelon, it shoots a burst of two. And if you pay attention to those damage numbers, you'll see that with one stack of Rampage, I'm now hitting 50 to the head instead of 44. So that means 50 times two, that's 100, two bursts to kill. Likewise, on your screen right now is the Omelon sidearm last dance in the energy slot. Mine has Outlaw, Kill Clip, and Ricochet rounds, so yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. It can absolutely shred a shotgunner if need be, but if you have Kill Clip active, it can actually combo into some melees very, very well, so it's good for keeping up a Devour Chain. I do find that this gun struggles against traditional primaries, so I've been pairing it with the Snipe or a Bow. But where the Last Dance struggles, the bad reputation does not. This thing is like the Annie of D except in the energy slot, and my role is very similar to the Annie of D, though I'm not sure how the base stats stack up. I would still much rather appreciate getting an Annie of D if only the gunsmith would give it to me. I think I'm underselling this gun though. I feel comfortable using my bad reputation upwards of like 30 meters, which is comparable to what hand cannons were effective at in Destiny 1 Year 3. This is one of the few loadouts in the game at which I feel effective at every distance I have an answer for. At close range, I have the bad reputation. At medium range, I could snipe body shot clean up with the bad reputation or have a kill clip. And at long range, I got the snipe. I'm gonna go ahead and shift gears here in the background and talk about my exotic weapon my power weapon, the World Line Zero. At earlier points in the video, I talked about how strong a sword is, because you can see third person. That plays hand in hand with what I'm about to do. 
I'm about to sprint into a wall to activate this perk called Temporal Sprint, which allows me to teleport forward in a slice and dice action. Notice that I activate this perk while in safety and it still auto-aims onto the two unsuspecting shotgun apes that get deleted. Which reminds me, I need to get the catalyst for this thing which requires doing escalation protocol. So I really need to get on that. So this part's short and sweet. Telesto. Shoot it at the floor, shotgunner runs into it. Telesto. Has no damage drop off. So shoot it at anything and you'll probably kill him. This has a severe upgrade from the Destiny 1 counterpart. Trust me. In addition to being used as the ultimate shotgun trap, this fusion rifle can actually be dumped on the floor for one pivotal moment to get rid of a super. Seriously, this is one of the best guns in the game and I criminally underuse it because of the power of Fighting Lion. Every single thing I said in my 2016 review of this gun in Destiny 1 holds true, except now you don't even have to think about it as much because the projectiles are now proximity based rather than time. This next loadout contains Smuggler's Word and Polaris Lance, the exotic scout rifle. I already talked about the burst sidearms a little bit, but this just goes to show how strong they can be, just like remote detonation on grenade launchers. But pay very specific attention to how I switch between the two depending on the distance of the shotgunner. If they're far away, Polaris Lance is out. If they're close range, my Smuggler's Word is out. I also use a dodge close quarters to throw them off and it totally works, but take note that I'm using bow tracer right now so it sort of gives me wall hacks so you can see that this guy is taking the most direct line towards me. So even if I didn't have bow tracer, I could use a combination of my radar and the sounds that I'm hearing to determine when to do this jump melee juke. Every single time in the crucible I always think that there's no way someone's just gonna directly run at me in a straight line. I think they're gonna add some sort of mix-up, some sort of mind game. But no, they actually do run at me in a straight line, and it screws me up every time, because I just expected something more. I expected something greater, and I guess it's saying that simplicity really is the best weapon sometimes. So my advice specifically in regards to dealing with shotgunning is that trying to be too clever is its own special brand of stupidity which is exactly how I ended up with this background situation here. Cold heart and a bow. I'm not gonna lie, when you kill somebody with this combo by straight out aiming them, it is the best feeling in all of Destiny. But to think I could have done the exact same thing with the shotgun, it just, it pisses you off. It really does. Basically, whatever sort of marginal benefit you get for running cold heart and a bow, you would actually probably get more benefit for just running a bow and a shotgun. Or a scout in a shotgun, Mida in a shotgun. Now I do occasionally run Cold Heart in a snipe, but that requires having a lot of snipe rifle scavenger armor and a team willing to let you pick up the special ammo bricks after a competitive round in. But again, the trade-off isn't that great. It's sort of like having a snipe and an auto rifle, except your auto rifle always has kill clip. And then at that point, why not just run Fighting Lion? It shifts my focus from precision aiming to geometry, and I get more overall benefits. So unless you're a masochist, unless you're Shroud, unless you're a person who plays rhythm games with way too much time on your hand, there is absolutely no reason to run this loadout if you want a shotgun counter. So I just mentioned Fighting Lion. This is not that. This is Orwing's Maul, a concussion grenade launcher. Now to get a different concussion grenade launcher, the Malicious Birthright, you would be having to run the Lake of Shadows Nightfall. What I'm demonstrating right now in this background clip is that I'm using the sword to see third person and I'm testing this shotgunner's patience. Remember, patience is the key. I'm waiting for him to stupidly rush and he never does it. So I sort of fake, I see his reaction, and then I actually go for it. Every player you encounter in the Crucible is unique. They all have different approaches to the same problem. That's one very significant reason that I find myself playing a lot more PvP than PvE. After a while, you sort of learn all the patterns of the enemy AI. But in the Crucible, your problem-solving ability is always improving and always changing, which is why this next clip is pretty cool. Look, I anticipate that he's not gonna straight hold forward, but he does. Thankfully, he was shoulder-charged by another player that I happily sliced with a quick fang, but I noted it. I remember that that player likes to rush. What you're gonna see me do right now is use the Orwings Maul to concuss somebody, then use Lucky Pants to switch quickly to the Crimson, then when I get a kill, I heal. And look, the same situation again. This time, I expect him to rush, and he walks right into the grenade. 
Of course, that player very well could have said, hey, I rushed Cammy last time, and that didn't work out. Maybe I should slow it down and start working an angle, maybe wait for my nade. But he didn't. He decided to do the exact same rush, and it played into my favor. So part of countering a shotgun is learning to read other players and learning to occasionally throw a random mix-up. Also, major shout out to my clanmate Drewski who came up with this loadout of Lucky Pants and Crimson, aka dubbed the banned loadout because, you know, Crimson's a banned weapon and Lucky Pants have a legally modded holster. Stupid destiny jokes, I know, but may maybe it gave you a chuckle. Abrupt tone shift. Cammy, there is no shotgun counter. You lied to your subscribers. Alright dude, just, just chill. Throw on Chaperone or Lord of Wolves or that Cerebus auto rifle thing. Like. Yes, they're shotguns, but they have more range than a shotgun, so it's sort of like a shotgun counter because you're bringing a better shotgun to the situation. It's like, don't bring a knife to a gunfight, just bring a bigger gun. It's kind of the same concept here. Everybody shotguns, so use a better shotgun. I only put this section in the video because I deal with a lot of people, especially in Rumble, that feel like they're too good to use a shotgun. It's to the point where they seemingly make up these imaginary rules just to make up for the fact that they're losing, when they could just throw on a shotgun and win if they were that good. So that's what I want them to do. Throw on a shotgun, please. If you think that there is no counter to a shotgun, please throw it on and use it because I am perfectly happy using most of those example loadouts that I listed, using my fighting lion and a snipe to win matches. But I get it, I get it. Some of you are coming from the point of you don't like shotgunning because it turns it into a one-dimensional game, a one-gun game, where shotgun is the only answer to everything. Personally though, I don't see it. I feel like there are plenty of counters to shotguns available, and I'll continue talking about them. But don't jump to conclusions right now and think that I think the game is perfect because I certainly don't. I think it's in the best state it's ever been overall big picture, but I'm sure that other iterations of balance passes had different aspects that were better than what we had now. Aspects. When you look at the big picture though, I think we're doing pretty good right now. Another abrupt tone shift, let's move away from that somber music onto some Ty the Tasmanian Tiger background. <laughs> Anyhow, I don't feel like I've even scratched the surface when it comes to specific shotgun counters. I mean, there's a lot I could think of. There's Controverse Hold, there's Stompy Control Jump Float Baiting, Gemini Jester, Sticky Nade Grenade Launcher, Fighting Lion Rally Barricade, Shinobu's Vow and Vow to wait for both grenades before ever engaging. I could seriously go on, but I'll stop for sake of saying that I feel like I've given you all the tools to decide for yourself if something is truly a shotgun counter. Other than that, the more specific builds are probably going to have to be saved for a specific video. So let me know in the comment section which one you want me to prioritize the most. Thank you so much for subscribing, even for checking out my videos. You the best.